For more tips and tricks, don't forget to hit that button and subscribe. Also, ring the bell so you can get notifications anytime I have new videos. Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. I'm Paul Ricaldi, and today we're going to be covering the rest of this shed, or at least another step on it. I'm sorry for you guys that have been watching that I haven't had my continuing videos on this, but I've been real busy lately. My mom fell and broke her hip. She's 83 years old, and she's staying with my sister while I renovate her house. Boca Manufacturing donated a bathtub, one of the walk-in tubs for me, for this house, so I had to get everything prepared for it. Everything came out smooth, it looks great, I'm real happy with it. But, this is not my tub, it's for my mom. So I'll let you guys know what she thinks about it in the near future. Now let's get back to the video. Right now, I'm gonna show you how we did this sheathing and how I cut the door out for it. I took a two by four and I ripped it. It's an inch and a half this way and an inch and a half this way, it's square. I set this on the bottom. Now you don't have to use this in particular, in fact, I didn't even use a two by four when I built the actual one, but I popped the line and set my board on there. I didn't have a two by four at the time. I hold it flush to the bottom and I run screws through it and that holds it in place. And then I can just set my sheathing on top and it doesn't wobble back and forth. It stays nice and straight. The next step would be to cut out my door. There's a couple of ways to do it. You can take and use a circular saw, pop your lines, Make sure you lined up with, with the inside. And you can go over just a little bit over your frame because trim's gonna cover it, so it doesn't matter. Get you a nice straight line, cut it all the way across. Or you could use a reciprocating saw. I prefer to use my router. And this is the bit that I use on my router. This is a flush cutting bit. You can get this bit for as little as $10, $11 on, uh, online. And I'll have some links in the description box. This one here is a Bosch, so it cost me a little bit more, but it's a very good bit. This bit I've had for several years. In fact, when I cut the windows out and the door out of that shed right there, I used this bit, and that was several years ago. I've used it numerous times since then, and it still works. So we're gonna take this, drill a hole, and I'm gonna show you just how fast and easy it is to route this out. This right here is a Ryobi. It's uh, not a very expensive router, but it works great. Make sure it is unplugged. When you put your bit in there, push it all the way to the bottom, bottom it out, and then pull it up a tad. You don't want it bottomed out, and you don't want it sticking to the very end over here where it can possibly break loose. You get your measurement from the inside to your door, which is right at 12 and a half inches. Try to get close to your frame. If you're a little on the inside, that's fine, but you might want to save this. If this is an actual door opening, you want to save that because I use that to make my doors. Um, now, I'm going to go drill a hole right through this and we're going to follow it around. Now, this is a Harbor Freight Warrior set and it is junk. I tried it out. Uh, these bits are, you have a hard time cutting balsa wood with this. You can get a skill set for about the same price you pay for one of these. This was, uh, I think, $19 normally. And I see those on sale all the time for $19. So, get yourself a good bit. That's one thing, because uh, this drill is plenty powerful enough to run any, anything through. But if you don't have a sharp bit, that's what you get. Now you have a nice clean hole that's almost the exact size you need to put your door, to make your door. So when you trim this out, it covers everything and it fits just right. That's why I cut it out clean and I can use these panels for my doors. You see this bearing? It runs along here. So you don't want anything that's sticking up. You do not want to have these screws sticking out at all. You countersink them because when this rolls on here, you see where it hits? Right where that screw is. If I had this extended further or if I had my screw closer and it was sticking out, my carbide bit would hit that and it would totally mess up my bit. So 
That's why I make sure any screws that are around this are countersunk. This stuff right here is oriented strand board, okay? Remember that because this stuff is real durable. You look at the back, you see all the little chips that go different ways. It's not particle board, it's, it's OSB board. And you ask for that. Make sure you look for something like that if you're building a shed, unless you want to do some type of lap siding or hardy board or vinyl siding. But if you're just building a shed and you're gonna paint it, I swear by this stuff. You make sure that you have this thing square. Sometimes this will rack a little bit before you have your plywood in place. Now if it's racked, you can pull it because you got a frame. It's just, all a, it's just a frame. You can tug on one side a little bit, put your level on here, and when it's plumb, then you can, then you can shoot your board in. You take your plywood. That's going to lock everything in and make it strong. It's also going to keep it in place. So once you have this thing plumb, you tack it in, it's not moving. And this right here is a bird's mouth. And basically this was a bird's mouth too. I just cut the end off so I could put my plywood on here and it ends here and then I'm making the overhang out of a two by. On this side, we're gonna box the whole thing in with fascia board and all. So you can see how it's done on a house with a soffit or if you wanna do that on your shed, this is another way of doing it. I hope you found this video useful. On my next shed video, I am gonna be covering overhangs. I'm gonna show you an easy way to put your overhang on your shed. Then we're going to do a follow-up video where I'm going to show how to do a soffit, how to totally box it in like you have on your house. We're also going to cover how to cut the rafter tails for that. If you don't mind, please hit like for me and drop a comment. I always like to hear from you guys. I will see you all on the next project, and don't forget to subscribe.